right, this is the old trailer, my former RV that I actually bought, I don't know, five, six years ago from another ham radio operator. Check out Ham Radio 2.0, my main YouTube channel. And this 2011 Dutchman Coleman Lantern Edition is for sale. We're going to talk about it right now. As I said, this is the old trailer and old, old to me. The new trailer's right there. You guys have seen videos on this channel about that RV, that Forest River RV, which is a 2022 model. This is a 2011 model. It is a Dutchman series trailer. I'm gonna do a walk around of the inside or of the outside first and then the inside. You can see all of the information here, Dutchman Manufacturing Incorporated. I've got a picture of this when it wasn't so faded, so I can send that to whoever, whoever, whoever wants it. But it does have a slide out room. That works very well. I've never had any issues with the slide out room. So that's the front master bedroom that we'll talk about in a second. On the slide out room has a fold out couch. Uh, well, it has a couch that folds out into a bed with an air mattress on it and the air mattress. It developed a hole in it a uh, number of years ago and I never replaced it because nobody ever used it anyway. This right here is the dinette. And you got this big window by the dinette and a, a window back behind the dinette. The dinette turns into a sleeping area also. This back part right here, you can see this tape down the side here. At one point in time, I had a leak. I've had all of that fixed and it's all been repaired and then they, they taped it up so it wouldn't happen again because they said to tear all of this out would be really expensive. I had a brand new roof and all sealant put on this trailer about a year ago, about this time last year. Here's the back of it right here. That was the original, was originally from Mesquite, Texas, you can see. This part right here, which I've never used, there's a grill. This thing can fold out here and there's a grill and the grill comes with it. It's in the front compartment up there. And then you can cook here and the grill connects here with gas. So it's a propane grill that, that connects right there. You can use that if you want to. This is some storage right here. Well, down there's the storage. It's got two bunk beds in it. We'll get to that in a minute. This is the bottom bunk, the top bunks up there and there's storage underneath. Uh, this bottom bunk here. I always thought it would be a great idea to put like an outdoor kitchen or a 12 volt fridge or something like that in that in there. I never did anything like that. It, there's some uh, some companies that'll build you like a slide out shelf and you can have your kitchen on one side and fridge on the other. I always thought that'd be something fun to do, but I just I never got around to doing that with this. I just replaced this awning. The awning was uh, it's the vinyl awning like normal. It was old and torn up and had cracks in it whatnot. So I just had that replaced earlier this week right before recording this video. So it's a brand new awning, had that done. Dual axle, like I said, this is your water heater. Uh, that's the, um, I think that's the heat, the, the actual heater heater. So it's got two plugs on the outside, 110 volt. It's got an outside light and it's got two outside speakers, one there and one there. And it's got a car stereo system, double den car stereo system in it, um, which I'll show you here in a minute. I replaced the speakers when I bought this trailer cause they were blown. And about three or four years later, they were blown again. So apparently the quality of speaker that, I just got them on Amazon, the quality of speaker, uh, the, the size that fits in there, the ones they recommend are not very good. So if I were to keep this trailer, I would probably want to spend, I think they cost me like 80 bucks for the pair or something like that on Amazon. And I, you know, they weren't great for three or four years, something like that, but then I, I went to use them last year and they were blown again. So I don't know if maybe just because they're outside, I, I don't know, something. Something didn't mesh right. There's the door and the screen. It's got uh, walk up steps there. There we go. All of the ramps all, or all of the stabilizing jacks work just, just fine on this. There's no problems with that. This is a pass through compartment that goes underneath the master bedroom. It goes all the way through to the other side. And that black bag over there, you can't really see it. That's the, um, that's the grill that we were talking about a second ago. I've got an interstate battery on it because they used to be good, but they're not anymore. <laughs> I've had to replace that twice in the last two years because they, even though it's deep cycle, it keeps getting bad cells. So I take it back there within the warranty period, they replace it for me. Once I have to spend money on a new battery again, I'm gonna get something else. I'm not gonna get another interstate battery. It has two 30 pound propane tanks. And I put a couple years ago, I don't know if you can see that or not, but I put these gauges on it. There's a gauge here and there's a gauge here. So when you turn the tank on, it's, it tells you how much gas is in there. It's fairly accurate. It's not 100% accurate, but it's a good, uh, it's a good estimate of how much uh, propane you have left. What I like to do with dual propane system is fill them both up, turn one on. Usually, the, it's usually it's the side closest to the uh, to the door, so it'd be the passenger side of the trailer. I turn one on and I use it until it's until it's empty, 
And then when it's empty, I turn it off, take it off and take it back home. But then I turn the other one on. So if it's in the middle of a trip and I've run out of propane on the first bottle, I've got a full brand new second bottle. That's how I like to do it. Um, you can run both bottles at the same time and it'll last twice as long. Maybe get a Mopika Bluetooth sensor like I have in my new trailer. That might be an option for you too. I put this on, this is an electric jack instead of the stupid hand crank one that came on it. I put that on myself a couple years ago. It's worked great. It's a Husky product from Amazon. I'll link that in the description below as well. And I should put a battery box. I had a battery box on it and it got torn up. It just got weathered. It was starting to crack and fall apart. So I took the, the battery box off and then the battery itself won't sit in. The, it's not big enough to sit in that area. This, uh, this angle iron area because it's made for the battery box to go in there. So I just have it sitting there right, right now, but I will get a new battery box for it eventually. And then this guy, it's not unlocked right now, but this guy passes through to the other side that we just saw a minute ago. So you can see it is, I mean, it's a 13 year old camper. It's gonna need some TLC. I have not garage kept it. I've kept it out here at my hunting lease for the past four or five years. So it's, uh, so I had to make sure I got the, the roof tended to on time and whatnot and like i said i replaced the whole roof it's still going to develop leaks one way or the other but i replaced the roof about a year ago all new seals all new everything up there it's got one of those membrane roofs that you're supposed to reseal every year or two i used it during hunting season last november december january november december of 2022 january 2023 i had zero issues with it after replacing the roof so that's all good let's go inside and see what's inside here one thing i should say is that everything in this camper works everything works the way it should the refrigerator works it runs on propane and or 110 volt ac the microwave works the three burner stove works i don't remember if the oven works or not i don't think i ever used i think i tried to turn it on one time and i couldn't get it to come on i couldn't get it to light i think the the pilot lights out but if you like hold a lighter in there i think it'll light up i think it's propane i never used the oven so i don't know i'll have to test that but the air conditioner and the heater work great the water heater works great. The water heater will run on 110 volt AC or on propane. So you can run your, uh, your refrigerator and your water heater both ways. The only thing that's required for 110 volt AC or shore power generator is the microwave, all of the plugs. It does not have an inverter in it. My old pop-up trailer had an inverter in it and this one never did. And I thought that was strange. I guess most people who use this size of RV use it in a RV campsite area, something with 30 or 50 amp hookups and that's okay. I always wanted to put my own inverter into it, but I never got around to doing that. So the plugs won't work, the microwave won't work, and the air conditioner won't work except for on shore power, 110 volt uh, alternating current. Everything else works on either the 12 volt battery or propane. So what I like to do is kick the, um, kick the refrigerator on. You can see right here, it'll run on gas like that. I don't have the bottles turned on right now or it'll run on auto. So what auto does is it detects if there's a 110 volt AC and if it does, it switches off. And then once the AC is removed, it will kick on and kick on to the, to the propane. So what I like to do is kick this on to gas right there and plug it up when I'm about to go on a trip and uh, connect it to the truck and open up my propane bottles on the front and then let this cool down while I'm driving. I might put some drinks and whatnot in there. It uh, needs to be cleaned a little bit, but it's, it's a decent size refrigerator there. And then this freezer works really well as well. So the freezer's just fine. It's got plenty of cabinet storage right here, there and there. And then these three drawers, I used to have silverware in this one and uh, longer utensils in this one. And then just some extra towels and whatnot down there. Of course, you can put anything down there you want. Three burner stove, as I said, microwave, the over the vent hood. I don't know if you can hear it running right now, but it works fine. Uh, there's a light down there. It's not very bright. Probably needs a new bulb. I did go through and replace all of the bulbs a couple years ago with LED bulbs. So all of these are LED bulbs. We're all on battery power right now. I don't have any shore power out here. I don't have a generator running. So all of the lights work, of course. The two bunks here. That folds into a, a full-size bed. This folds out. I'll fold that out for you here in a second. That's my. That's like a queen. queen it's it's a short queen or whatever they call it, RV queen size bed. I um, that's usually where I would sleep. Um, two two good good cabinets right here for hanging clothes, nice and tall there. And then this one here, right there. So that's storage. One uh, one thing that did get messed up with the last roof leak was this right here. And I asked them if they could just replace this part back here. And the thing they kept telling me was, well, there's nothing to tie it to. 
And I'm like, well, what was the original one tied to? And their answer was, the original one is, is what's hanging there. I'm like, yeah, so what was it tied to? And they're like, well, it's rotten. So they never really answered my question. I didn't really understand that there's nothing to tie it to since everything else is tied to something. The cabinets are tied to something. That would probably be an easy fix. I don't know. I might get someone to look at that depending on who is interested or not in the trailer. So that's the sleeping quarters. It will sleep five comfortably. Well, you can sleep two people in the bed if you want to cozy up with uh, your spouse. You know, that's that's cool. You could Typically, I'll have one guy there and two guys in the bunks there. And sometimes I'll have um, somebody sleeping here. But this used to fold out. Well, it still does fold out. I'll fold it out for you. It still folds out, but it doesn't have a, a, a uh, mattress on it anymore because it's that mattress just kind of got foobarred over the years. There. Just like that. So you can, it's got a plug back there behind it where you can plug in a CPAP machine or something like that. And then there was a, a, a um, blow up air mattress with its own motor in it that used to sit there. And it would stick out here. So it was really hard to get by the bed in the middle of the night. If I was sleeping there, I had to get up in the middle of the night to pee or something and walk back there to the bathroom. I had to walk by that. So it, it was kind of cumbersome. A couple of the, a couple of the guys would just let their kids sleep on this couch without ever folding it up anymore. And I thought that was a good idea. But anyway, that's, that's a decent couch and, um, it does have storage underneath it right there. It probably needs to be cleaned a little bit, but there you go. Storage underneath it, storage cabinet down here, right there. Another, uh, no, that's outside storage down there. It's got a plug there and a plug behind there. So it's got two plugs on the slide out room, which my new trailer has no plugs on the slide out room. So that's something I definitely miss. So it'll sleep, uh, technically. Two people in that bed, one, maybe two people in this bed, two people there. And depending on what configuration you do, you know, maybe seven or eight people if you really wanted to squeeze that mini in here. This part right here, this mirror I keep looking at. So this mirror is a swivel and it has a TV on the back. Now this is not a smart TV. It's an LCD TV. It's kind of old. I think it's 720p resolution. I always thought, you know, it'd be, it'd be great to replace this one day. I never did it because it always worked. Still works fine. I put a Google Chromecast on the back of it and just used that where we were, where we were. it does have a um an antenna a pat an active antenna not a crank up antenna but an active antenna on top that you can go into the tv and you can you know say scan for channels and whatnot so you can do that if you want to and then of course this is the double din car stereo i told you about and it will play it will play dvds here it'll play you can select where's the power button right there so you've got three speaker choices you've got front speakers here right there You've got back speakers, which are back there. And then this C1 is the outside speakers, which I told you earlier were blown. I don't know if you can hear that or not, but it's just static out there. So so you can play the speakers or the TV inside and outside. You can do all that. And that uh, that all works pretty well as well. So there's all, okay. So the last thing is the bathroom. And the bathroom is pretty good. The toilet works fine. The shower works fine. I replaced this shower head not too long ago. It was a cheapy Amazon and it lasted about a season. <laughs> so I've got a... I've got a brand new shower head for it right here. This part right here was was pretty much like this when I got the trailer. You can see it's kind of got some rot in there. I've never had any problems with it and I always wanted to get it repaired and it just never it never really bothered me as far as usage of the shower, so I never I never repaired it. But uh, obviously that somebody will want to look at that at some point in time. And if there's anything if you're really interested in this trailer because like I said it's for sale, it's a reason I'm recording this video. If there's something that you're just really like, man, if you fix that, I might be really be interested. You know, hit me up, put me, uh, put a note in the comments, hit me up on email, something like that. It's not a big deal, but uh, that's your your dinette that does fold down, which I mentioned a minute ago. Storage across the top there, storage across the top there. The slide out room and the awning are both right here, and uh, we put the slide out room in, and this will work on. Well, let me let me close the bathroom door first. I don't want to mess anything up, and we're gonna do in. And the slide out room will will come in just like that so never really had any problems with the slide out room it's got two really powerful mo motors on it the front and the back slide in evenly unlike my new forest river trailer which is one of the main problems i've been having with it so that's good something i i, I did forget to mention so this it has central heating and air which my new trailer only has central air but not central heating so this has central heating and air. So this one, you can turn the air conditioner on. I'll be happy to demonstrate this for somebody who wants it, okay? And you can, you can, if you open this vent up, then all the air conditioner cool air comes out of right here. 
if you close this down just like that, it reroutes the air to these vents throughout, throughout the trailer. There's one in there, there's one here, there's two right there, and then there's one in this front room right there. So you've got central air conditioner throughout here. And if you turn the heater on, it comes out the, these floor vents right here, which is really good because heat rises, obviously. And I use the heat a lot more than I use the AC. We don't go camping much in the summer. So this is an insulated floor that does not get cold during the winter because you've got a good six or eight inches of subfloor underneath what you're looking at right here, which is where the vents are routed. So when you kick this heater on, it, it warms this trailer up nicely, very nicely and very quickly. So I was always impressed by that as well. So it's got, that's one thing I miss on my new trailer. It's only got one air conditioner port in the top and the air conditioner runs 24 seven. It'll kick the compressor off and on, but the fan runs 24 seven on my new trailer. This one, when it gets down to temperature, it'll shut itself off. So you can, uh, you can set it just like your thermostat at home. It'll run when it needs to and then shut itself off and it's real quiet when it's not running. So, but it's all controlled from right here. So that's a, that's a good thing there. And I think that's pretty much it. So these skylights don't open or anything. Uh, there's one back there, the one I showed you with the, with a little bit of rot back there. There's this one right here. And then there's another one. This one has a vent on it right there. There's one with a vent and a fan in the bathroom. And then there's a second just light, uh, skylight only out over the shower. And then there's this one that's a light only. And then there's the top one that is, there's no fan in that one, but it does have an open up vent that you can, you can open it up and get fresh air in if you want. So, but that's it. And there's storage, storage cabinets right there, obviously. Storage cabinets underneath the TV right there, obviously. Oh, there's my old Chromecast. Huh. I got a new one that I'm using. That's pretty much it. I just had this brand new sink put in or brand new faucet, I should say. Just had this brand new faucet put in. The other one was starting to leak a little bit. So I had this, this brand new faucet put in and, uh, and had a plumber come out and plumb it up for me and everything. They used some weird fittings that I couldn't find at Lowe's. So I just called a guy and he's like, oh yeah, I know what it is. And came out and put it all together. It was all good. But that's it. It's, uh, it's been a great rig. I just, I don't need two RV trailers. And this one, honestly, this is, tw it's 27 foot from front to back. It's 31 foot from tongue to bumper. And I don't know what the gross uh, vehicle weight or anything like that is, or the dry weight, anything like that. I can put a screenshot here of the uh, of the VIN sticker that's out there that I showed you a minute ago. It My F-250 will pull it, but my F-250 is not a diesel. And I decided that I either need to buy a diesel or I need to downgrade or, you know, downsize my trailer, the weight of my trailer, if I wanted to pull this thing around the country because driving around and, and even the new trailer, I get terrible gas mileage on the, on the F-250, the, the V10 when I'm pulling stuff. So it's not even great for that. When I got that truck, I did not own an RV. So I kind of wish I would have gone back and gotten a diesel at this point in time, but I don't know. It is what it is. This thing's 13 years old. It's a 20, 2011 model. Like I said, I don't need two of them. And this one's a little bit bigger than what I needed. A little bit too heavy for me to pull with my current vehicle. And unless I want to buy a new vehicle, which I don't want to right now, I just decided to get a new RV. And that's the one that you guys have seen videos about on this channel. So if you have any interest at all, if you have any questions, you want me to answer something, how much do I want for it? It's a good question. You know, I would say I'd, I'd, I'd like to have a fair price for it. And I don't know exactly what that is. Here's what I did. I looked up, so this, that, the VIN number or the model number on this thing, which I'll show you this right here. This is a CT260BH. Now they're kind of willy nilly with these model numbers. They get all kinds of random crazy and you, you can't find stuff. But if you look up that model number on the Dutchman website, you can't find it. Okay. So I looked up on the Dutchman website, I looked up 2011, 27 foot, Dutchman Coleman Lantern bumper pool RV trailers, and they range from about 11,000 to about 22,000 used. It says, depending on condition, depending on amenities. Now, if I could get the very, very bottom of that price, then great. 11,000 is would be perfect. However, I went and talked to the guys at Outback RV, which you guys have seen me do several videos on this channel with uh, overlanding and RV trailers from their shop. And I was telling him, now he hadn't looked, he, I, I haven't taken it up there for him to actually appraise or I, I thought about maybe doing a consignment thing with him. I might do that eventually. But I told him what it was and I told him everything that it had. And he's like, well, the, the, the market's kind of cold right now. This was two or three months ago. So I don't know what the RV market is 
exactly today at the time of this recording. But he said the market's kind of cold right now. He estimated I could get between seven and 9,000 for this thing. I had a guy seriously look at it and I told him I would have taken 7,500 for it at the time. Uh, that was before I had these latest repairs done with the awning and, uh, and the new sink that, or the new faucet that got put in. So I probably would still be okay with that price, but Hey, if someone wants to link something to me and show me where you think that it might be worth more or less than what I'm talking about, send me a website, put a comment below with a website link and I'll go look at it and check it out. I'm not going to turn down a reasonable offer. It's uh, you know, it is a deer camping trailer. It's not something that you're going to keep that you want to take home and take your family out in and have a glamping type rig. Like I said, everything works. It's solid. It's It's been a very good rig, but it uh, it's primarily been used for deer hunting uh, since I've had it. So and the guy I got it from hardly ever used it. That's why he got rid of it. Anyone has any questions, let me know. Put a comment below. Let me know what you think. And uh, if this video does well and I get uh, a seller on it, then great. Uh, if not, then I'm probably going to take it up to Outback RV and see if they can do some sort of consignment deal on it, which I'll have to pay them like a 15% commission. So if you take that into account, 15, whatever it's worth, minus 15% commission, I'd rather just sell it outright. So we'll see what happens. But I do need to get rid of it, and uh, I'm going to try to push it. Um, this is uh, mid-August when I'm recording this video, so if we could get rid of it sometime in the next month or two, it'd be great. Thanks for watching. Put your comments below.